Meet Maya Adamska, evolutionary biologist at the Australian National University. She's an expert in sponges They're at the base of the animal tree of life. And so, for example, here's a book on evolutionary transitions to multicellular life, and she has a chapter called Developmental Signaling and Emergence of Animal Multicellularity. And here's a paper that she's written on sponges. Let's hear what she has to say about the question, are we alone? What is your name? Uh, Maya Adamska. Okay, and uh, Maya, are we alone in the universe? I don't know. I haven't been throughout the entire universe. Okay. In the question, are we alone, what does the word we mean to you? Animals. I think uh, animals. animals or uh, all life forms that evolved on Earth. I wouldn't narrow it down to humans. I think when I think we, I have at least animals in mind. You're a sponge expert, right? That's what some people call me, yes. I consider myself a developmental biologist okay. working on sponges. <laughs> okay. Do you think there'll be sponges on other planets? Oh, I think that given that we don't know of any life forms on Earth that evolved independently of the one origin of life of which both we and plants and fungi are, uh, are derived, I doubt that there would be sponges on other planets. I would even be surprised if there were other DNA-based life forms on other planets. Should we expect multicellularity elsewhere? And if so, is it worth making the distinction between complex eukaryotic multicellularity, like you and me and plants and fungi, or might it just say, hey, bacterial multicellularity is enough for me? I think the way evolution works, if you have simple multicellularity or if you have simple cells, I would expect you would only need time to produce complex multicellularity. You think that complex multicellularity would evolve again? Yes. Why? Because um, of the way that uh, life forms replicate. When they replicate, they make mistakes. Uh, and the mistakes provide a wonderful opportunity for things working better or worse. And, uh, and then we have selection. And if we have selection and diversity, then we are just bound to generate complexity. Is meiosis something that we should expect to re-evolve and therefore sex? I don't know if meiosis, but definitely sex. Do sponges have sex? Of course, all the time. Two sexes, male and female? <laughs> they uh, depend on the sponge species. So there are species where you have very simple determination of two sexes. You have male sponges and female sponges. And you have sponges which are hermaphroditic. You have sponges that change. That are both male and female? Yes, at the, yes either at the same time or at different times. And you have sponges in which we simply don't know. Really? But they definitely have male Can't you look at their DNA and say, are you a male or a female sponge? Uh, in not all species you are able to tell. So are we alone in the universe? I don't know. And why don't you know? Because I'm a scientist and I don't know everything and I'm not afraid to admit to that. <laughs>